Breaking news from the UK now, of course, uh, the UK Parliament voting to pass a final vote, in fact, to pass the Brexit deal from Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Of course, the government having a huge majority in that regard. Let's bring in Nina Dos Santos. Nina, what's the result of this vote? I have to say, a pass was expected. Yeah, it was expected. This is the third reading, so the final sort of trajectory of that withdrawal bill to go through the House of Commons before it gets bounced up to the Upper House of Parliament, the House of Lords, for its first reading. The initial procedure will start of that later on this afternoon. I can tell you that uh, now that Boris Johnson has secured his big majority of 80, he's also managed to add 19 more votes to that. He has won this by a majority of 99, with 330 MPs voting in favour of passing the withdrawal agreement against 200. 31. Now, let's just take a step back and think, how did we get to this position? Remember, this is uh, has been thus far an unpopular, a divisive piece of legislation that has claimed the political career of Theresa May. Uh, she tried to put it through the House of Commons unsuccessfully on three attempts and was historically defeated by a significant margin at the final attempts. Then Boris Johnson obviously took the keys of 10 Downing Street and tried to push his version of that through, but obviously he needed to go back to the polls to get a sizable majority to actually push it through. It looks as though he's managed to do that. Now, remember, Juliet, this is just a first part of a two-stage process when it comes to Brexit. This piece of legislation considers citizen rights, the actual financial divorce settlement, also the customs arrangement, because this new iteration of Boris Johnson's withdrawal agreement bill actually obviously scraps that unpopular arrangement of the Irish backstop. Instead, uh, calls for a softer border this time in the in the Irish Sea. But also what's slightly different about his current version of the withdrawal agreement bill is that he wants to put a time stamp limit on it. He thinks that he can get this phase of Brexit done and dusted by the end of this very year to then move on to the second phase, which is renegotiating that relationship with the EU. So time-wise, the next thing to think about is it going through the House of Lords next week. It has to be done and dusted in the UK by around about the 27th of this month to then go to the European Parliament for ratification by the end of this month. Julia? Oh, we'll talk about the what next in a second, but I just want to show our viewers the moment, and it feels a little bit anticlimactic after three years of drama and tensions, but the moment that deal was passed. Just watch this. Order! Order. The eyes to the right, 330. The nose to the left, 231. Yeah. 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 The eyes to the right, 330. The nose to the left, 231. So the eyes have it. The yeah. eyes. eagle-eyed viewers, Nina, will notice there that we've had a change of speaker. I was just saying anticlimactic there. It is a real tone difference from the speaker too. Just, just explain to me what's happened here and what, what the difference is with speakers as well, beyond the obvious, of course. Well, as you heard there, when they said order, there was order. Uh, it wasn't called <laughs> yes. for multiple times in cacophonous ways, let's say, which has been the uh, hallmark of John Burko, uh, the speaker over the last decade. Um, it's a very different House of Commons, not just because there's a new speaker uh, in terms of tone and decibels, but it's also a very different House of Commons because of the makeup of the House of Commons. Boris Johnson gambled on that election at the end of the year in spectacular fashion and came back with a thumping majority, the most sizable Conservative Party majority since the days of Margaret Thatcher. Again, another pivotal time for the UK's relationship with the EU. Um, and as such, uh, when types of legislation like this fiendishly complicated legislation that has its own difficult history uh, trying to get through the House of Commons over the last two and a half three years uh, go through the House of Commons in the past we've seen very divisive scenes when they've been voting on this withdrawal agreement bill uh, obviously it's interesting to see that finally it is swept through uh, on its final hurdle 
with a very different makeup in a much calmer fashion. Now, what is significant about this moment through the House of Commons is that it means for anybody who was a so-called Brexit denier or had any vestiges of hope that uh, the UK could turn its back on this procedure, really now uh, the course is set. This bill will go up to the House of Lords for its first reading. It's currently in its third reading in the House of Commons and has just passed that. But it's still on the first reading of the House of Lords. Uh, so it'll go to that later on this evening and then throughout the course of the next week to come, because remember this is the end of the parliamentary week uh, on Thursday evening. Throughout the next week to come, they will start voting on it on the upper house. Julia? Yes, and we shall watch that uh, space. And my apologies as well to our viewers if I feel I misled them. Deputy Speaker, of course, Dame Eleanor Lang there. One of three, I believe. Swapped one for three figures. <laughs> Lina Dos Santos, thank you so much for that.